up friends? My name is Laura. If you've never visited my YouTube channel before, welcome. Today I have a special guest for you. Let me introduce, or let her introduce herself. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Habiba from the Trekking Pals and I'm really happy to be with Laura today to share with you some really exciting stuff. Wonderful, I'm gonna put her information right here and also in the comments below. But in today's video, we both actually have done Kilimanjaro highest peak in Africa. I have a lot of different videos on it if you haven't checked those out. But also we're actually going to be comparing Kilimanjaro versus Aconcagua. As you know, I've done Aconcagua and it is on her yes. list in the hopefully near future to accomplish Aconcagua. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what's different about Kilimanjaro versus Aconcagua. So stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Aconcagua is definitely a mountain that's high up on my list and I think this is a good way for me to compare it to Kilimanjaro and really just hear from you what was your experience like climbing Aconcagua, how similar it is to Kilimanjaro. So a lot of times when people are um, going for the seven summits of the world, Aconcagua is the tallest peak in South America, the tallest peak in the Americas. So a lot of people, once they're done Aconcagua, that's kind of next on their list. So in every way, it's a little bit harder. It's a little longer, more expensive, a little more technical, but it's definitely doable. So that is kind of a lot of times what you hear when you're on the mountain. I finished, Akin or I finished Kilimanjaro, but next is Aconcagua and that's why I'm here. Um, my experience with it, so it is in Argentina, within South America. It is just under 23,000 feet of elevation. So starting with the first thing there, it's definitely more elevation than Kilimanjaro, which is just over 19,000 feet of elevation. So it's really high up and so compared to Kilimanjaro, I think the level of difficulty is a little bit, it's harder than Kilimanjaro overall, would you say? It is, it's probably going to be quite a bit more snow, not necessarily the year that I did it, it was quite a bit less snow than usual, but in general, it's definitely going to be more snow than Kilimanjaro. Um, so you, you're probably, a lot of times you're gonna need an ice ax, not necessarily, you're probably gonna need a helmet in case um, rock wood may fall on you, and you're for sure gonna need double boots. Um, which are not super pleasant to hike in. Mm -hmm. So um, compared to Kilimanjaro, you're not gonna need those things. So it's definitely more technical compared to Kilimanjaro in many ways. Um, how about the, the length of the whole expedition? I mean, on Kilimanjaro, you're usually seven days, eight days max. How how long does it take to uh, climb Aconcagua? Absolutely. So uh, like, like she said, Kilimanjaro, eight days maximum. Aconcagua, you're actually looking at about a 21 day permit. With that time, um, you're actually, of course, getting up there and getting down. So you're looking at around 19 days um, between the entire ordeal. Um, and that includes kind of a day getting to the actual base camp because from the city of Mendoza, Argentina, which is where you're kind of starting from, it's gonna be about a three and a half hour drive each way. Oh, oh that's awesome. And um, I'm just asking you questions and things that I'm thinking about. <laughs> um, so logistics, um, you have a company taking care of all of your gear, guiding you up the mountain. They take care of your food. Absolutely. So um, for that, it's very similar to Kilimanjaro in terms of um, you're probably going to have a cook the whole time. You're going to have someone, um, a guide. Um, for Kilimanjaro, they're really, um, for the most part, someone is going to be carrying your gear. They're really on top of doing that. For Aconcagua, you're really going to be wanting to train a bit more because you're going to be carrying your own gear. Um, you can hire porters to be carrying your gear. You're looking at around $250 per day. Um, and that might also include on the way down. So um, you're definitely going to be wanting to get used to weight on your back. <laughs> that's that's not a very fun part for me. <laughs> yeah. Because I really like on Kilimanjaro how you really have a day pack, you just have the essentials, water, snacks, and that was good enough. Um, so on Aconca, I remember for Kilimanjaro, I had to do a lot of research just to choose the company that I'm gonna be climbing with. Yes. Uh, do you feel like? Did you feel like the options were overwhelming when you were looking at a company for Aconcagua? So I'd actually say way fewer companies are up Aconcagua. There are a lot more South America based companies. Um, all of them do speak English. I think a lot. It was a very big search term. Like, will I know Spanish? I might not know the people. Everyone's speaking English up there. Um, but I went with the company Grahalas. I 100% recommend them. They were like the cooks of basically all of the companies on the 
um, mountain already. Um, I did some, I definitely did some uh, looking into, but for the most part, I would recommend just having someone that you might know through YouTube, checking out Instagram, any of those things, and actually seeing recommendations of companies. Awesome, and uh, you talked very highly about Graha Grahalis. Yeah, <laughs> Grahalis. Um, so do they also help you with the logistics to get to Argentina in case you need a hotel the day before? Do you need a visa or is there any documentation that you need to enter the country? Yeah, so Argentina, you don't need a visa. Um, I won't say that for every country, but I know for the US, England and Canada, you do not. Okay. Um, what is included in you, any kind of um, package for Aconcagua, which includes a call is, would be actually getting your visa. So they, it includes picking up from the airport, dropping off from the airport, your hotel before and your hotel after, and the guide actually getting the visa in general. Mm -hmm. um, and that's included in the price. If you were to go and, um, well, the te technically the visa itself is around $700, but that is included in the actual cost. Oh, so the whole climb. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the visa is really expensive, but it is included. So if you're looking at um, Aconcagua being a little over five thousand dollars, that is included in it. Okay, that's that's good. And and then park permits and everything. That's all within that permit. Yeah, yeah. And um, throughout the whole expedition, are you hiking every single day, or are you taking rest days? Yeah. So for the most part, you are going to have two rest days. Um, that might change a little bit because the guide kind of can tell um, if you're struggling or not. Um, they also will have two contingency days. So that basically is weather permitting. So um, a lot of times when you go to from camp two to camp three, you're really only going to make that move if um, the weather window looks good for the next day to actually summit. So you technically could be sitting at camp two for a couple of days and that's where the contingency days come into play. But if you look like a good weather window, have outer and you get extra days when you come down. That's awesome. But there is obviously no guarantee that you are going to make it up the mountain even with those contingency days. 100% right? <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah. for sure true. Yeah, it's it's amazing because it's such a big investment of time and money with no guarantees, but I guess you can't control mother nature. Yeah, unfortunately, um, they definitely, you know, talk about all the guides there talk about how it really is weather is a lot of the reason people don't summit. Um, a lot of people do come back a second time if they haven't summit because of the weather. Um, they say Less than 5% come back a third time though. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and I could say I would not be coming back a third time. I don't think oh. anyone would be. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's definitely just, uh, yeah, mother nature can take its course, but um, you know, you're only there, I think it's open very early December and it closes again mid-February. Okay. So it's a very small window. And in that window, hopefully you should get a weather window, but there is that chance that you don't. Wow, so with that uh, small window for climbing, does it get quite busy and congested on the mountain? Mm, um, yes and no. Uh, <laughs> I would say yes, it's definitely more busy than your average mountain, but it's never a situation of oh my gosh, I could not pass those people. Mm. They were being super slow and couldn't get around them or anything mm. like that. Um, it just ends up being like, you're you're on this mountain for like three weeks. Like mm. I hope that I might meet a bunch of people. I sure. hope that I have people around me. Um, so that's kind of how I felt about it. It was so lovely to meet so many wonderful people on the mountain and form those friendships and form, you know, oh my gosh, you're one day ahead of me, you're back down here. How was today? Um, kind of getting that words of wisdom from them. So um, especially um, if like there's a weather window ahead of time, you're probably all almost gonna be pushing at the same time for that next day. Whereas that next camp, that wasn't getting the weather window, it was probably almost dead at that um, camp. So when there's when there hasn't been a large weather window and then there suddenly is one, that's when it's gonna be. Um, I was also curious about uh, the climb itself. Remember how in Kilimanjaro we, st we stick with our group and then we have our meals together. You pretty much just know your group. Uh, on Aconcagua, are there chances to socialize with other groups? Do you get together for like dinner or is it still your your small group? Yeah, so basically you're still gonna only be with um, people from, so for example, Grijalas, you're probably really just gonna be around Grijalas people, but with that said, there's probably gonna be like seven different groups. 
probably around three groups, three different groups will be in each food tent. So it's a large, like l large dinner dome. tent. Or, yeah, large okay. dome that you can stand all the way up in and kind of walk around. Um, and then um, there'll be like three tables out. So within that time, you're definitely like mingling with everyone and you might like chat. I I'm a chatty Cathy on the mountain. So um, I got to know everyone kind of from Grahalas. Um, and then a lot of people like, what else are you gonna do in your downtime? <laughs> you're gonna play cards, just a fun fact oh. up there. So um, there'd be like 12 of us playing cards all day on an off day. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it really sounds like a fun, it's fun adventure. It's fun. A lot of hard work, but still fun hard work. Yes. Um, I was curious about training for mm. the mountain. For Kilimanjaro, for me personally, I started training about three months before and it was just, you know, long hikes, heavy backpack, you know, endurance, cardio. What does the training look like for Aconcagua? Yeah, it's, it's honestly similar to that. Um, I did actually a lot of Stairmaster with a heavy backpack. I just kind of went there with an, like like a weirdo um, with a um, my Osprey backpack that I'd be using out there and threw in like a 45 pound dumbbell and <laughs> put on a TV show and did not touch the handlebars until that TV show was complete. Um, so that's basically what I did a lot of mornings. Um, I also kind of went for runs. Um, I definitely hiked along the way as well. Um, but it, I definitely got like my upper body strength more than an average hike into shape so that um, for that large heavy backpack. I think going into it too, I didn't want to. Um, I think it was like, I've spent a lot on this trip. I uh, am not going to spend $250 extra for someone to um, be carrying myself. So I made sure that like I would be okay if I were to be hiking for six hours one day with a 60 pound bag on my back. So that was kind of my thought process going in. Um, but just knowing that it's really long days up until base camp for Aconcagua, it's just like long, but it's not too steep. Once you hit base camp, it's just kind of gonna be steep and long and you're only looking at a couple hours, but it's just a couple slow, <laughs> long hours. And from base camp up, are you still carrying your heavy backpack? Yes. So actually to base camp, you're barely carrying anything because included in your permit is going to be a camel um, and they're going to carry your stuff. They take very good care of their camels for the record. Very, very good. Uh, once you get to base camp, you're going to flip your gear. You're going to leave your other things that would be more of like your hiking boots. You're going to leave that down there. And then you're going to then have a heavier backpack. Um, <laughs> doesn't and, get easy. Yes, it doesn't actually get easier. It gets a lot harder um, to actually get to the summit then. Um, so that it's going to be basically to camp one, two, three summit, and probably you'll have a rest day in there. That's awesome. You're getting me very excited about, about this climb. You definitely can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's great. Do, um, and thank you so much for all, all you. of your questions. <laughs> I hope that this did answer any questions that you have out there on YouTube. If you do have any other questions, you're welcome to comment them below and I will make sure to get to that. And also make sure to check out Trekking Pals. Make sure you subscribe. We are also about to film another video that you don't want to miss and we're going to be doing it on Kilimanjaro. So if Kilimanjaro is on your list, you're not going to want to miss that video. But thank you so much for being here and thank I will more. see you all next time. Bye. Bye.